Welcome to another Game Tape with Tony. As always, I'm your host, Tony Ferrari, here for Elite Prospects. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Saginaw Spirit Center, Montreal Canadiens prospect, Owen Beck. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Not too bad. So I have to start off with, how, how are you enjoying Saginaw? Yeah, it's been great. Um, yeah, it's it's a super nice area here. Um, you know, I've got a great bill, bill of family. The rink's uh, amazing. The facilities are awesome. Um, <clears throat> great group of guys there, and um, it's super fun to play the hockey that we do. Now, you played at the Memorial Cup last year. You'll be there again this year. Is there anything you can kind of draw from the experience last year to help your team and yourself this year? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, it's a quick tournament. Um, I think, uh, you know, we um, – we got to be ready to go from the, from the jump, uh, be able to use the home crowd to our advantage and, um, you know, make, make sure we're, uh, we're all dialed in for, for the start of that. Cause, um, you know, you don't get any games back. It's, it's not a seven game series, you know, it's, you need, you need to be, uh, you know, as good as you can be right off the jump. So, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that'll be the key. Now, as mentioned, you were drafted by the Montreal Canadians with 33rd pick. What was it like being drafted by not only, any team in the NHL, but such a historic team in the NHL. Yeah, you know, Montreal, um, as an original six team, um, there's so much history there uh, with that, that franchise, so many great players to to have worn that jersey. And, uh, you know, to be a part of that is, is so special. Um, you know, being drafted in Montreal to, to the home team for that draft. Um, especially after the draft had been online for the past couple of years. Um, yeah, it was, it was so cool. Um, you know, I just felt, um, all the passion, all the love, uh, from, from the fans instantly. Um, you know, they were, they were so loud, uh, the entire time throughout the draft. And, um, yeah, when there were people there, you know, um, cheering for me who didn't, may, might not have even uh, known I existed before. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was so cool to, um, to see that and, and now be a part of it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's real. Now I have to ask, what, what was your favorite team growing up? Assuming now it's Montreal. Yeah, no, uh, it would be Montreal. It's, it's uh, kind of funny. I've never necessarily had a, you know, favorite team um, that I've really stuck with for a long time. Um, when I was younger, my brother liked uh, Ovechkin in the, in the Capitals. So um, I kind of followed in his footsteps because I would have been four to six years old. Um, and then actually when I got to, probably 10 years old I was like okay I kind of want to you know I'm you know I like hockey I kind of want to um get my own favorite team um and my dad was a diehard Leafs fan and for some reason I was just drawn to to pick Montreal um and just go against him so I was um yeah there was really no reason behind it um just randomly pick Montreal as my favorite team so I started watching them a lot um until about probably 2015 when McDavid entered the league I thought he was awesome I I really liked uh watching his game and, and see how he you know dominated right at the jump so um then I started watching Edmonton um and then I'd say just with both my brother and my dad um later on being Leafs fans I started uh, like that they were always on the tv and they outnumbered me two to one so uh, the Leafs games were uh were always on so I, I caught myself ending up uh cheering for them leading up to draft day but uh yeah no I went back to uh, to Montreal pretty quick after that yeah that's pretty fair but now that you you're a Montreal Canadiens prospect how much are you in contact with the team does there weekly check-ins or monthly check-ins or do they kind of just let you do your thing for the year and uh, deal with you at training camp and uh, development camp and stuff yeah no there's um there's a fair number of check-ins throughout the year um you know just recently player development has been has been down to Saginaw to watch me play and um you know I spoke with them a lot over that week um you know um probably got, talked uh talked on the phone at least three three times four times and then um you know they, they uh, I met them met with them in person um while they were at the at the rink so um yeah I talked to them a lot and then you know when they're not watching my games they're always watching video and you know checking in here and there and um you know I've been lucky enough to um have like my shifts clipped and sent to me um from Paul Byron who's uh, recently started with uh, in a player development role with the Canadians and um yeah I think his stuff's unbelievable um obviously fresh out of the league and you know a guy that um you know earned and deserved every every minute of his career and um so yeah it's uh it's it's good to get a, a very pro insight on my game and and see um what it takes for me to get to the next level now you've represented Canada at each of the last two world junior events the first one ended a little bit more favorably than the last one, but what was your experience like for that team? And well, what was the difference between the two tournaments? 
Yeah. Um, it was awesome both times, you know, obviously we talked about how the result, uh, you know, wasn't necessarily in our favor, but you still learn so much from, from just representing your country and it's always such an honor. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, I think, you know, both times were, were amazing. Um, you know, in Halifax as a, as a, um, injury replacement that year, um, getting out there and seeing the home crowd was, was unbelievable. Um, it, it was crazy. I think it was perfect being, um, you know, packed into a, a junior barn. Um, I mean, it held 10,000 people, but uh, obviously it's it's small by by some standards. And I think that just made the atmosphere that much better. Um, you know, so many chanting, chanting down, uh, rooting for Team Canada. And um, that's got to be one of the coolest experiences I've ever, um, you know, one of the coolest atmospheres I've ever played in. Um, and then I think, you know, this year was unique being, it being over in Sweden, you know, I had never traveled to Europe and um, seeing how well the Canadian fans traveled um, it made the majority of our games, like a, like a home game, um, which was nuts. Um, you know, that rink was really cool. It was cool to uh, experience the, um, the bigger ice for, um, for once. And uh, yeah, no, just everything about that. Um, you know, the experience with hockey Canada is amazing. And yeah, um, you know, I've, I've really got nothing bad to say, obviously, you know, again, we can mention the result until, until the cows come home, but um, just, you know, on a personal, personal level and, um, you know, something that I'll remember as an experience and a memory for the rest of my life. It was, uh, it was unbelievable. Now, both times you came back, you ended up being traded basically right away. Um, last year going from Mississauga to Peterborough, and then this year from going from Peterborough to Saginaw. What's it like kind of being traded in that time where you're coming back right into a new team? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a bit of a whirlwind. Um, you know, you just kind of have your mind focused on the world juniors while you're there. And, um, you know, there's obviously so much pressure and, um, you know, attention and eyes on you while you're there and you're just trying to, you know, do the best you can and, um, you know, uh, play your, play your heart out for your country. And then, um, it's a pretty quick turnaround, uh, after the tournament ends, you know, you're back home the next day and, um, you know, you're basically living in a new world, essentially, um, you flip <laughs> from one world to another and, um, yeah, so now you gotta, uh, you know, if you're, I mean, if you're on, um, you know, a team that's going to be buying at the deadline, it's exciting. I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, you just get to stay put and you get to see the new additions that are coming in. But, um, you know, when your um, team's looking to sell and, you know, you're on the trade block, uh, especially coming back from world juniors, which helps your value a little bit, it just, um, you know, it's kind of nerve wracking, um, not knowing where you're going to go, having to, you know, meet a new group of people and, and play in a new system. You're not sure how it's all going to work out in the end. And, um, you know, there were, I'd, I'd say some struggles, um, my first time being traded, just adjusting to Peterborough because I'd never done that before. Um, and I found that, uh, you know, with that experience coming here to Saginaw this year, um, you know, I was kind of used to the experience. So it was, it was easier to, to settle in quicker. And, um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a good start for me so far here. I mean, a, a six point game in your first game with the spirit, uh, wasn't too bad either. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, not what I was expecting, but, uh, yeah, another another super cool memory for me to have. Now you played at the OHL level, you played at the World Juniors, you've even got a stint in the a at the NHL with the one game stint last year with Montreal. What's the different levels of competition like, and and maybe who's a guy that you were kind of impressed with to face at that NHL level? Um, yeah, I mean, I played Ottawa um, at the NHL level, and um, I'd gone up against you know, Brady Kachuk in, in preseason and, um, you know, some of their other guys, but a guy that I hadn't uh, played before was Claude Giroux. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm a big face-off guy myself and, um, you know, he's had a, um, you know, a pretty good track record in the NHL in that category for his career. And, um, yeah, getting to, um, yeah, getting to play against him was, was really cool. Obviously he was a legend in Philly and, um, when he came to Ottawa, um, you know, I was lucky enough to get the, the chance to play against him. And um, I remember uh, we were in our own end one time and I had the, I had the puck made a pass and he came up and, um, you know, gave me a bump. And um, obviously I tried to uh, stand my ground and um, he, uh, he came up to me at the next face off we took against each other and said, you're pretty strong kids. So, um, you know, I thought that was super cool. Obviously getting a compliment from a guy like him, um, no matter how small it may be, is just something that'll stick with me forever. And um, I thought that was uh, really cool that, you know, a guy with a thousand plus NHL games was, uh, you know, was complimenting a kid in you know, in his first game. So um, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a guy that, um, you know, I had a lot of fun watching and playing against in, uh, in my game. 
Now we're looking forward to the NHL career that you're going to have pretty soon. Uh, who's the guy that you try to model your game after? Yeah. Um, you know, there's been quite a few names that I've used um, in the past to, to kind of, um, you know, um, a lot of guys that have modeled my game after a um, couple being, you know, Bo, Bo Horvat, uh, UL Erickson Eck and um, kind of Nazem Kadri, just being able to, you know, play all over the ice and, and you know, uh, be hard to play against and, and be an impact impact player at both ends and in the face off circle. And um, yeah, you know, all, all three of those guys are um, pretty similar, obviously, you know, they're lefties and I'm a righty, but um, yeah, it's uh, those are those are guys that I feel, um, you know, I can play a lot like. All right, let's dive in some of this game tape here I've got for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just starting in uh, the defensive zone, you know, it was a good job by uh, Zayner there to get his guy up against the wall. Um, you know, I picked it up behind the net, realized I had a little bit of time and um, could generate some speed with some crossovers coming out through the middle. Um, yeah, I got to uh, the middle of the ice, protected the puck a little bit from the four checker and, um, you know, got on a, kind of a two-on-two -two rush. Um, you know, I kind of faked going uh, – going one way there to, uh, to the, um, defenseman on the, on the top of the screen, but, uh, I cut back and use my support to, um, to, you know, isolate a two on one here, uh, with, with 18 on the outside and, um, slipped it under the, uh, the defenseman's triangle. It was a good play to uh, get a little push shot off there by, uh, by Moosey and, um, you know, just finished my route and, um, to where the puck ended up, uh, picked it up and, uh, went low to high and, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was looking for, um, castle there coming in the middle. Um, but, uh, it, it slipped under his legs. Um, I'm not sure if he let it go on purpose or not, but uh, yeah, I got through to 73 good net front presence. And, um, yeah, we beat the, uh, beat the goalie clean there, um, down a couple of goals. Now what's it just been like playing with such a new cast of characters? There's a lot of really talented guys on that Saginaw team. Uh, you can talk about Michael Mises, Aiden Parekh, Aiden Castle, the list goes on and on. So what's it been like just with that new cast of characters? Yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been good so far. Um, you know, like with any team, we have um, some kinks in our game that we need to iron out, but um, there's just so much talent uh, across the board there from our back end, um, you know, with guys like Parekh and, and Dionizio and Donovan and, um, you know, Hash and, and, you know, like you saw Gozi there scoring that goal. There's, there's a, um, you know, whole number of guys that can, tri can contribute there. And then, um, you know, I think we got four strong lines that we can confidently run up front as well that uh, all know how to make plays and, um, and play within our system to, uh, to create. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. Um, you know, I've had a lot of fun, as I mentioned at the start of the podcast, playing, playing this type of hockey here in Saginaw. Um, you know, we're obviously going to look to keep improving as we go down the line, um, you know, up on both ends of the ice, but, uh, yeah, no, just this whole, our, our group is, um, you know, is fantastic and I'm really looking forward to what we can do, uh, in the playoffs. All right. Now let's take a look at this next clip I have for you here. Uh, another good job of you kind of breaking up ice, making a good play of driving the net. And, and then you end up just banging the puck in here when it's oh, not always necessarily the most comfortable thing to be around the front of the net, uh, <laughs> getting beat on by defensemen there. So what, what goes into this part of your game? Yeah. Um, obviously saw that, uh, that little cut by, by Donald there. Um, I was coming back in, in the middle of the ice. We had, uh, you know, he threw it far side. I picked it up and realized I had, uh, um, you know, a winger kind of stationary at the blue line there. So I uh, felt I drew those two guys in, uh, laid it off, and he made a good pass through the triangle. And then, yeah, you know, it's just good habit to uh, to finish your route at the net. And um, yeah, Cass made a good play. It's a smart shot there to go off the pad. And um, yeah, I was just fortunate enough to uh, to get a stick on that and and get that one in the net. Now you've been a guy that's always been complimented for the the way you think of the game, the way you kind of used your intellect throughout the ice and in, in, all, in all three zones what goes into that aspect of your game and how do you improve um the the hockey iq part of your game yeah i mean i think the biggest part of it is just being a fan of the game and just um really loving to to watch it and learn and um you know there's a lot of times where um i'm sitting at home and i'm trying to pick up on um you know parts of NHL games that I can implement into mine, things that I recognize within our system, um, you know, and, and doing video with, uh, with coaches and, and rewatching a lot of game film. Um, you know, I think uh, some people say that it's kind of a gift just to have hockey IQ, but I think it is, um, you know, a very uh, trainable aspect of, uh, 
you know, of a player's skill, uh, skill set. Um, just kind of recognizing, um, when it's a good time to make a play versus dump the puck in or reading where you're supposed to be, um, based off the situation, uh, what kind of sport you have and all that. So, um, there's definitely things you, a lot of things you can pick up, uh, learning off, um, NHL habits and, um, and watching your own game film and, and, uh, you know, learning from it in a sense that when you see that situation again, you might do something different uh, than you did the last time. All right, let's jump into this next clip here. It's a shorthanded shift by you and you end up with, with a shorthanded goal at the end of it. The penalty kill is obviously a big part of the game where it can alter things for either team, swing the momentum in a big way. When you're able to score a, a shorthanded goal like this, where you strip a player in the neutral zone and go in and score, what does that do for your confidence and what does that do for your team's confidence? Yeah. I mean, being shorthanded, obviously you're just trying not to give up a, a goal. Um, you know, I was just trying to, um, I got a little bit overextended there in the, uh, in the D zone coming out to the point and um, made a good play to swing it over. And then they look for the back door, but I was just trying to uh, drive my feet and get a stick on that pass. And um, looks like I did there. Uh, looks like I was trying to stretch bloomer on a, for a breakaway and um, pass got deflected up in the air. It was a bit of a bobbling puck to, uh, to the Guelph guy there that, um, picked it up and looked like he was just trying to settle it and didn't know I was coming with full head of steam and um, kind of caught him on, um, you know, in his blind blind spot there. He didn't see me and I uh, was able to get a good stick on it. And, um, you know, I was in all alone and uh, I don't know why, but I see him whenever I'm on a breakaway, I just always seem to go to the uh, five hole, but um, yeah, no, I was uh, lucky enough to, to get that goalie to open up and um, slip it through. And um, that's a big goal for us, uh, you know, on the, on the PK, like you said, now, one thing I've noticed about your game is you've become a lot more explosive, especially this year. What have you done in the off season to kind of work on stuff like that? Yeah, um, you know, I think explosiveness comes explosiveness comes down to a lot of speed work and um, some track work. Um, started a little bit of power skating um, this summer as well because that's something I actually haven't really done my whole career. Um, so it was something that you know I wanted to to look into and see what it could do for my game. Um, you know, I think. It, I think it's, you know, done a lot just in that first year and I'm going to, you know, look to continue to do it. But, um, you know, I mentioned a lot of, uh, a lot of speed work in, in the gym. So, um, you know, maybe starting with a little bit lighter weight, but just making the movement a lot faster. Um, and, you know, doing a lot of single leg stuff that applies to, uh, you know, applies to hockey with that, uh, lower weight, but higher intensity and, and explosiveness, explosiveness and pop. Um, and then, and yeah, I mentioned the, the track work, obviously, um, you know, the faster you can, um, get your muscles working, uh, with overspeed, uh, training and whatnot. Uh, you know, there's a lot that, a lot that goes into, um, into that kind of thing. Uh, I'm no expert on it, but, uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to, to have trainers that, uh, uh, know their stuff and, and can help me, um, you know, prepare for, for big upcoming seasons. All right. Now the defensive game is a big part of your game. Turning defense into offense is obviously a big part of the game in the NHL. And as you advance levels, uh, you do a really good job here of initially just taking the block shot and then going up ice and eventually scoring here. What goes into that part of your game, just understanding where to be in the defensive end and and how to pressure guys and when to pressure guys? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of it uh, depends on our system here. Um, you know, as you enter the zone, 14 was kind of um, my guy. And then the puck, um, you know, got up top to uh, to their defenseman there. But um, our winger was caught on the wall trying to make a play. Um, and the puck got by him up to, uh, you know, up to our D. So I kind of switched off, um, took the shot lane, um, you know, got that block shot and it came out to, uh, to neutral zone, uh, to the neutral zone. Um, and then it was a, kind of a 50, 50 race with, uh, with Willie and, uh, and Willie and his guy, uh, he got good body position. Um, you know, I was just trying to hold on side there and, um, yeah, I was able to, to stay on side, come in, um, a little bit on a partial break and, uh, yeah, we managed to put a put a shot over the the goalie's glove side, um, just over uh, in the top corner there. So, yeah, just being able to kind of um, read when there's a a chance to uh, to break for offense is is pretty key, and you need to kind of control your speed and um, you know find find a guy and read off the situation that's uh, that's occurring in the D zone. Like I said there, that uh, I think Cristo got caught uh, trying to make a play on the wall as as the winger and. Um, he was making a play on a forward. So his D was left open and um, I was coming through to support him. Obviously the puck turned over to, uh, to their guy. And um, yeah, I was able to get in the shot lane, um, get in front of that shot. And, and it created uh, you know, kind of a two on one uh, rush or partial break for, uh, for Joey and I. 
Now, the defensive side of the game is so important. You talked about Klaus Ru earlier, talked about guys like Joel Eriksson Ek and, and Bo Horvat, who are both known for some of their defensive habits. How important is it for you to maintain good defensive positioning and good defensive habits while main, while improving your offensive game? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people have kind of questioned the offensive game, offensive side of my game for a long time. Um, but I think it's uh, it's key to have uh, that defensive side of the game um, that allows a coach to to put trust in you when you're up or, up or down a goal. Um, you know, you're you're going to make sure that the puck stays out of your net in uh, in key moments. Um, and I think just having that side early on is uh, is key and um, not changing my game, but just kind of adding to it um, on the offensive side um, will allow me to be a lot more complete player um, that can, you know, like I said, be relied on by coaches at whatever level and um, and then building the offensive side of the game from there is, um, you know, obviously that allows me to uh, to be a guy that contributes on on the offensive end as well. But, um, you know, if I get caught out in a long shift or, um, you know, on an icing late in the game, up a goal, um, you know, the coach isn't going to be worried that I'm just going to be sniffing for offense. Um, you know, if there's an empty net, you know, I'm, I'm going to take care of my own, uh, my own zone first. All right. Now the last clip I have for you here is a good shift by you starts off with the face off and then you end up working hard behind the net, getting the puck back and getting an assist. That work ethic is going to go a long way towards making the NHL and becoming a consistent player in the NHL lineup. But what is it that drives you to be that hard worker? Because not every player, despite having a ton of talent, is, is able to kind of put in the kind of work that results in a shift like this. Yeah, um, just being able to kind of read the situation there. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a four on four shift. So normally I'd stay center on center. But, um, you know, since it was since both teams were, were down a guy, um, I jumped off the face off there, um, you know, saw the D kind of. Um, looking more up ice and was able to sneak in behind him, get a stick on it and, and win body position, turn off. And um, yeah, I, I made a play on my backhand there that, um, you know, I was honestly lucky to, to have work out <laughs> for me because I think it hit, uh, hit a guy's shin pad and it's just a good job by Bloomer there. Went into battle out front, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, the work ethic is, is key. You know, you get into big games, um, you know, in the playoffs and, um, you know, just kind of out, skilling guys isn't going to happen all too often um you know you're going to need to get nitty gritty and and you know um work extra hard in the playoffs to uh, to close out four games in a series and um you know everything's super physical and um you know the pace turns up so um you know the guys that uh that aren't going to work in the playoffs are kind of just dragging a team down so um you know obviously that's that, that was a regular season game so you build habits in uh in those kinds of games and um, just get ready for for when the uh, the pace and intensity increases in, in playoffs. All right, now we've gotten to know you on the ice, so let's get to know you a little bit off of the ice. If not hockey, what career path would you be going down? Um, it's not something I've thought a whole lot about, but uh, I've always been a little bit interested in um, kind of the medical field. Um, kind of uh, a story I have is when I got my wisdom teeth taken out, it was the first time I was put under anesthesia. Uh, anesthesia so... Um, I wanted to be an anesthesiologist after that, uh, after that experience, because I thought it was so cool. I was just out like a light instantly and, and woke up perfectly in time just as they were finishing the, uh, the surgery. So um, that'd probably uh, be something I would pick. I can honestly say I've never gotten the answer anesthesiologist before. So <laughs> I definitely commend you on that one. That's a, that's a pretty great answer. Uh, if you could have any superpower, which superpower would it be? Um, I've always thought invisibility was cool. Uh, I'm just kind of being able to disappear whenever and, and pop up out of nowhere and um, kind of sneak around uh, without being seen. Now, I know you're probably pretty uh, tight lift on your, your diet, but what's your favorite cheat meal? Hmm. Um, that's a good question, actually. Probably like a, a poutine or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good one. Um, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I don't really have a, a set one, but yeah, if I was going to go, you know, really loose with it, I, I'd definitely go poutine. Now, uh, if you could have dinner with any three people that are alive, who would they be? Um, probably like Gretzky, Elon Musk, um, and I don't know, country music fans. So like Zach Bryan, maybe. 
Now that leads me right into the next question. What kind of music's on your playlist? Who uh, who are a couple artists you listen to? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, uh, I listen to a lot of country, like Zach Bryan and Morgan Wallen. Um, listen to you know some rap and hip hop and stuff. So, um, you know, there's a Drake and Lil Baby and all all those guys. There's a whole lot of them. And um, for for rock, I, I like uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, Tragically Solid. Hip, um, Canadian band. So. Um, yeah, I like I like those three genres and um, just kind of uh, don't necessarily have any favorites, but um, just kind of like the, uh, the music in general. Now, you started your OHL career in Mississauga, and I've heard stories that sometimes they like to make the rookies uh, do a little bit of karaoke on the bus. Uh, do you have a favorite karaoke song or something that you go to when you're, you're singing out? Um, not not one in particular. I think for when I was in Mississauga, I used a Bruno Mars song. Um, I think it was when I was your man. Ah, uh, good one. Yeah, I thought <laughs> <laughs> the guys kind of like that. So, um, yeah, I uh, that was the one I picked uh, when I was in Miss Saga. All right, before we get out of here, can you give us a movie or a TV show recommendation, something that you're watching? Um, the new season of Blacklist just came out. I think that show's amazing. So, um, you know, if uh, if you haven't watched it before, I'd recommend uh, you know you start that one. All right, Owen, I really appreciate you doing this. Good luck the rest of the way, and uh, hopefully you can get the Memorial Cup this year. All right, thank you very much.